Well, welcome back to my shop again. I'm Earl, Earl Small Segment Shop. What I'm going to be doing is making a 48 segment per ring open segment turning. I'm going to make it, uh, I think, about 16 inches tall. And I've got the pattern drawn out here. Of course, I don't have a full 48 segments across because the pattern's repetitive. But this is what I'm going to be using here. And of course, this is one full pattern up. It's 16 se segments or 16 rings up. I think I'm going to double it to 32 rings. Of course, you can stop it most anywhere with this type pattern, but I'm going to double it. So I'm going to make it 32 rings tall. And again, it's going to be 48 across. So there will be six repetitions of these patterns across. Now I've been trying to figure out gathering woods for it. Of course, these colors, I just did these so I could get a good idea of what the pattern looks like. Colors don't necessarily represent the wood colors. What I've decided to do is use maple for the base wood here. I'm going to use Peruvian Walnut, Paduk, and I think I'm going to use Avidar, and I think I might use Black Limba in it. Black Limba in the Paduk and Avidar inside the Peruvian Walnut. Then I've been thinking maybe I'm going to put a diamond in here. I might. I can figure out what wood I'll use for that if I do. Probably Yellow Heart. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm going to make a floating bottom for it. The floating bottom I think I'm going to make out of Wangai, and the actual floating piece I'm going to use some tamarind, a thin piece of tamarind. And of course if I make the base out of Wangai, I'll make the top ring out of Wangai. I've drawn out the shape I want. Actually, I've only drawn it from the center out, only one half. And this is the shape starting at the base and coming up. It's going to be 32 rings, so each ring I'm going to make a half inch. Now, it'll give me the full 16 inches, plus, of course, the bottom and the top. And I printed out my cheat sheet for 48 segments, so I'm ready to go on that. So I guess the first thing I'm going to have to do is make the uh, floating bottom. So I'm going to cut up some wenge, make a, I'm going to make a 24 segment wenge ring for the floating bottom. I'm going to split it, I'm going to put a groove in it for the floating bottom. I'm going to put the floating bottom in. I'm, I'm going to do all that. So first thing I've got to do is make a a ring of wenge. I'm going to make it 24, which is, of course, half of 48 will be okay. And I'm probably going to make it about 8 inches. Yeah, about 8 inches in diameter. So 8 inches, going to need 24 segments. This is 48. I'm going to have to get my 24 sheet for that and find out what size I need. So first thing I need to do is mill up some wenge for it. Now there's more than one way to make a floating bottom. The way I do it, I use two segmented rings, cut a rabbit in one of them, put a piece in that floats, of course it's got to be turned around, then use the other ring to capture it. Now, I've got one ring glued up. I'm going to part this ring so I'll get two rings out of it. And actually, I'm going to make another ring. I'm going to make a light maple ring so I can put a trim ring in it. So I'll actually be capturing it with a light maple ring. Then I'll be turning the light maple ring down thin and then putting this second wenge ring over it. 
But anyway, I've got one guy, 24 segments, cut, sanded, dry clamp, they're good and tight. So I'm going to go ahead and glue them up. Then I'm going to make a maple ring, also 24 segments. And we'll go from there after I get those two made. Okay, I've got the wenge ring made. I'm going to split it later. But first, I'm going to flatten this. This is going to be the very bottom of the turning right here. The very, very bottom part that sits on the table. I'm going to turn it flat, sand it flat, turn the inside round. I'm going to take a brown paper bag, just like this. Use a brown paper bag, glue it to the face plate, just like that. Then after I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and work on the other side to make the floating bottom. But first I'm going to mount it to the face plate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it flat, turn the inside round. I'm going to mount it to this face plate with a brown paper bag. I've got the ring glued on paper, got the top turned flat, turned around inside and outside. Now normally I would take this ring and split it off, cut a rabbit in the bottom, put the floating panel in, and then reverse the top piece that I parted off and glue it back on. Now I'm going to part the top piece off and use it later. But I want a thin white ring in here. So, normally Holly would make a nice white ring in here, but Holly, white holly is not always easy to get. It's a bit expensive too if you do find it. So I'm going to use some real light colored maple. Got the maple ring. So what I'm going to do, part a piece off, put a rabbit in it, put the floating panel in, put the white maple on top to keep the floating panel in, then part the white maple so I get a thin ring. After I get the thin ring turned down, then put the top piece of the wenge back on it. So it'll be wenge, a thin white ring, and then wenge again. So first thing I gotta do is part this off, then cut a rabbit on the inside for the floating panel, and then I gotta cut the floating panel to fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and part this off. Got a groove cut in here. Ready to take the floating bottom. Got the floating bottom piece turned round to fit right in the groove with a little bit of clearance all the way around, maybe a 32nd of an inch. Now we know as the humidity changes that the wood moves this direction. This is the direction of the grain here. We know the wood moves this direction. So what I'm going to do I put a spot of glue here, here. I got it taped and I put shellac on it. So I pull the tape off and I'll have a spot to put glue here and here. Then glue it in. So I'll leave it free to move in this direction with no glue on it. Then of course I'll glue the next ring on top. Careful not to get any glue on this, just on this ring right here. So what I'm going to do Put glue on these two spots, remove the tape, and glue it in. Make sure it's got clearance all the way around. Give it room to move. 
So I'm going to mount this on the tail stuck, mount this on the chuck, put two spots of glue on it, glue it in, and let it set till the glue dries. This is glued in, two little spots right here and right here. Like I said, the grain's running in this direction. It's been flattened and smooth. It's just slightly concave in the center so I can flatten it and smooth it. Everything flat, smooth. Now normally, I would glue this ring that I parted off over it to capture it and hold it in. But I want a thin, light-colored ring in here for trim. So I'm going to glue this ring on, and then I'll part this off and make it thin. First thing I'm going to do is dry clamp this and make sure it fits perfect. So I don't want to glue it and find out later it don't fit. Make sure it's got a good tight joint all the way around. Okay, it looks good. Now I put shellac on the floating piece. I need a light layer of glue on this ring. If I put too much glue, I'll get squeezed out and get it on the floating piece and it won't be floating anymore. If I don't get enough glue, of course it won't glue together with a cover piece. So I'm going to use a nylon brush and put on just enough glue. I'm going to put it back on the lathe and bring the cover piece up to it. I'm just going to put some a light layer of glue on it all the way around. Probably go around twice. Now I'll mount it back on a lathe, remove this barrier strip, and bring the other piece up to it, and glue it on. Well, I've got this light colored maple ring on here. I'm going to make a trim ring out of it, but it's also the one that captures the floating bottom. Normally I'd use this to capture the floating bottom. But because I want a trim ring in it, I've got this on it. Like I said, holly would be better, but it's hard to find good white holly, and I can't always afford it. So what I'm going to do is part this off, save a little over half of it, for what, I don't know. But I'm going to turn it down to about an eighth of an inch thick, flatten it, and I'm going to glue this on top of it, and I'll be finished with the base. Okay, I've got the floating base ready. Using the trim ring actually is the hold down for the floating base. Normally it would be the other ring, but because I wanted a trim in there, I'm using it. Got the base floating in here. Got the two rings on top. Got it flat, ready to take open segments. So the base is all ready to go. And the actual measurement on it is about, it's about seven and a half inches. Just a little over seven and five eighths maybe. So I'm going to adjust the drawing a little bit and take that into account. So we'll start with a seven and a half inch base instead of eight inches. It'll be okay. We'll work it out. Just change it, change it a little bit. I got a bunch of wood milled ready to go. I got black limba. Got a whole bunch of it milled. Got some hormigo. Got some bacote. Paduk. Got Peruvian walnut, and of course the really light colored maple. 
Now, I know the pattern calls for five woods, and I got six here. What I've decided to do, and I haven't drawn it in yet, is this pattern and these open areas here, I decided to put in a small diamond in the middle. And that's what I'm going to use a Bacote for, I believe. All of these open areas, I'm going to put a small diamond in the middle. So, I've got that wood milled up for that. They're all half inch thick. And they've all got a good glue surface on both sides. So I don't need to worry about which side I glue it on with. Now, 48 segments per ring means that I'm going to have to index it 48 indexes around like this. They're all evenly spaced because they were indexed. Of course, this ain't 48, but the same principle. So, I got an index wheel. And I'm going to need 48 indexes to put on the first ring. But I'm also going to need 48 indexes to put on the second ring that are different or offset from the first 48. Which means I need 96 indexes. This index wheel, the outer ring, is 192 indexes. So if I use just half of them, that'll be 96. So what I'm going to do is mark one red, skip one, mark one blue, skip one, mark one red, skip one, mark one blue, skip one, mark one red. All the way around, I should have 48 red and 48 blue. Then I can use the red ones for the first ring and the blue ones for the second. So I got my magic marker here. Magic marker is easy to take off later with alcohol. The fact is, I just rubbed off all the old ones. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this all the way around. I've got my index wheel marked now. I doubt if you can see the mark. But blue and red all the way around, skipping every other hole. So this is ready. Got my material milled, got my drawing, I'm ready to start cutting segments. I think the first ring is going to be, first open segment ring will be 8 inch. So if it is 8 inch, I'm going to have to cut it at an angle of 2.6 degree. And for 8 inch, segments have to be cut at 0 0.367, the length of 0 0.367 and an angle of 2.6. I'll set my saw up, make a final check on the diameter, and cut some segments. I've got to figure out how many I need of each segment before I cut them. So uh, I'll get this all set up and then we'll do that. Got the first ring of open segments. I decided the first ring measured it's going to be 8 inches in diameter. So I'm going to cut them at an angle of 2.625. Cut them at a length of 0 0.367. I've already got the saw set up. Now I'm looking at the pattern. And I'm going to have to cut 12 Peruvian walnut, 12 maple, twelve paduke and six of the black limba 
and the homigo. So I'm going to cut 48 segments. Like I said, 12, 12, 12, 12, and 6 and 6. So I'm going to get them all cut. I've got 48 cut lined up according to the sequence I want to glue them on in. Check the pattern, check the sequence, check it again, make sure they're right. Now, I need some way to hold them in position. I got the index wheel to index them as it rotates, but I still need a way to hold them in position when I glue them. And that is what this is for. Platform, mount it in a drill chuck, put it in a tailstock, set it on a post in the banjo. And then I can use it to position these, glue them on. I got the stop block set for an 8 inch ring. This is the dead center, so I come out four inches from center, that's eight inch ring. And then just glue them on, this will hold them in exact position. So I gotta go ahead and mount this in the tailstock, and then set it on the post in the banjo. I got post set up to the right height, I got a stop collar on it. The post sets right against here. I'm going to go ahead and set this up and get ready to glue them on. Okay, I've got it set on one of the red marked indexes. Got the segment ready to go. Got the stop block set. Using tack bound quick and thick. I'm going to glue it on them. Five seconds. Spread a little glue on a thin layer of glue. Boy, these are awful small pieces, I don't know. These are awful small. So that was when you use 48. Okay, five seconds. Should be enough. Let's go to the next red index. It's on there. Now I gotta put the second one on thick. I hope I can get something out. Well, I just stuff don't want to run down good when it gets in, close to being empty. Take longer to get glue on it than it does glue it on. Okay, that should be it. But it's going to be fun. These are awful tight. Right, I'm going to go ahead and put them all on. 48 segments are on. The glue's dried for longer than 15 minutes. Like any ring, it's got to be flattened. So I put chalk on all of them, got them all chalked. I'm going to take a sanding board and flatten it. Shouldn't take long. chalk is gone, it means you're absolutely flat now, ready to take the second ring. Okay, there's been a couple of changes here. Let me have to make sure, there it is. Yeah, there's been a couple of changes. My wife looked at the uh, shape I had drawn out and she said, I've built turnings that shape before and she don't like them. Got to keep her happy. So, I'm going to go ahead and just make this one a barrel shape. Just a big barrel shape. So, I redrew it. 
just a rough drawing again. Right here, I redrew it. And I got the first ring on at eight inches. The second ring I'm gonna put on at eight and a half inches. I measured it from the center out. And on a pattern, I decided to put diamonds in. So I drew a diamond in to them. That's all I need. Just two spots have the diamond, so I know where to put them. And of course, I'm going to use the Cody for the diamond. So, right now what I got to do is cut the second ring. And the second ring, it ain't up to the diamond yet. It's the second ring right here. So basically, it uses the same number of inch wood that the first ring used, but the maple's in different positions, that's all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them, and again, like I said, I'm going to cut it to eight and a half inch ring, which means eight and a half open segment is going to be cut to a length of point three eight nine nine point three nine. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up and cut all the 48 segments for it. Got 48 cut for eight and a half inch ring. Got them lined up according to the pattern for the second line. After I got them lined up, double check them, make sure. Then I'm going to take them over and glue them on the turning. Got the gluing platform set back up. Got the stop box set for eight and a half inch diameter ring. Got it set on a blue index this time, blue marked index. Got it to start the right spot for the pattern. Check that and double check it. Make sure it starts right. Make sure it looks right. Make sure the pattern follows right. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing on a second ring. Again, tight bound, quick and thick. Light layer, very light layer. Not much. And glue it on for five seconds. Make sure it's in the right spot. I sure hold on now. Go ahead and glue on the second one. Things are awful small. They're not easy to glue on. Should hold on in five seconds unless my shop's too cold. It is cold right now. Hold it on. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and glue all of 48 of them on. Second ring's on. Sanded flat. I cut the third ring. It's going to be a 9 inch ring. Got them lined up. Double checked them. Got that set up for 9 inch ring. Going back to using the red index. I'm going to go ahead and glue this ring on. Now after I get this ring glued on, I'm going to start turning the inside a little bit into the first two rings. And then the fourth ring, I'm going to have to start working on the diamond in the pattern. So I'll be using the Bacote on the next ring. I'm just going to go ahead and just glue this ring on like the other two. I've got the third ring on, got it sanded flat, 
started turning the inside, turned the first inside the first ring. Now I'm getting ready to put the fourth ring on. And the fourth ring, now is where the pattern starts to change on. The fourth ring, the Paduk stripe is going underneath the Peruvian walnut stripe. So the first Paduk, first side here is going to disappear. So I'm going to have six Paduk pieces cut instead of 12. And the first, one of the diamonds is going to start appearing. So I'm going to have to cut six pieces for the diamond. And I got, again, got to be real careful and watch the pattern when I line it up and when I glue it on. And always check and recheck, and even after you glue it on, check again, make sure the pattern's right. It's easier than half to undo a ring, it's down three rows. So I'm going to, I've got the fifth ring on. Cut. First couple of rings I'm turned on the inside. Got the fifth ring sounded flat. Getting ready to put on the sixth ring. The sixth ring now. It's going to go right through the center of the diamond. So it's got a center piece in the diamond. I'm going to use Avidar. And it goes right through here. So there is the Paduk stripe completely disappears on the sixth ring. and starts to come back on the seventh ring. So on the sixth ring, there is no Paduk stripe. So I got all the segments cut and lined up. I'm going to start with the center. Putting them on, I'm going to start at the center of the diamond. Like I said, I got Avidar to do that. So I'm going to set up the gluing platform, the index wheel, and we'll glue a couple on. Got the gluing platform back in position. Got it sitting on my post, post right at the center, got it locked down, got it locked down tight, got the stop lock set, now this is the gluing platform from Chef Wire Kits, and this is the index wheel from Chef Wire Kits, I got it on a blue index, got it in the starting spot I want, so I've got the I have a dark piece here, goes right there, might as well go ahead and just glue it on. Using quick and thick, if I use tight bound too, it would take me 10 seconds to glue it on. Quick and thick, it only takes five. Now it sounds kind of quick, but that's what it takes. This should be on there. Five seconds. Okay, go to the next piece, which happens to be the Cody. Put it on. Light layer, quick and thick. I learned to leave my bottle upside down, and then I can get a little out of it. Slide this in. Tromp it down for a few seconds. Should be staying on there. Oh yeah, it's on there. I'm going to go ahead and put on all the rest of them. All right, we're up to the eighth ring. On the eighth ring, it's the top of the diamond and the Paduke Stripe is coming back. It's got the Paduke and the middle stripe, which in this case is Black Limba. And again, the top of the diamond. So that's where the pattern is. And it's getting out pretty, pretty wide now. And you can see how it's the eighth ring. It's an even number. We're using the blue index. So we're all set to glue on the First one, I'm going to start right at the top of the diamond. That's where I'm starting the pattern. 
Uh oh. Where is my? Here it is. Right my finger. So this is a very top piece for the diamond. I sure hold it on. I hope. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and put the whole ring on now. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the 12th ring on. The first diamond is complete. I'm actually starting the second diamond with the 12th ring. You can see the pattern starting to emerge now. And it's getting pretty big in diameter. In fact, it is. it's probably just almost as big as it's going to get right now. And it's a 12th ring even ring, so I'm using the blue indexes. And it's the same thing. A little bit of glue. Five second clamp time. Go on to the next one. Put another. Put all the rest of them on. I've got twelve segments or twelve rings on now. And I'm at the spot where I need to make a final decision on the shape. My wife don't like the shape I had in mind originally, and she wanted me to change it, but. I don't know. I've been arguing with myself and arguing with myself. And I've got quite a few shapes drawn out here. I think I'm going to follow this line right here. Good, bad, or otherwise, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm ready to put on the 13th ring. 13th ring, I'm going to make the same diameter as the 12th ring. And the 13th ring... Way up now, it's going to be the second row on this top diamond. Pretty soon I'll be up to where I have to start repeating the pattern. But right now, I'm right at the second row on that diamond. So I'm going to cut the segments and put the 13th ring on the same diamond as the 12th. I'll be able to put the heels on then. I've got... Row 14 on now. Row 12 and row 13 is right at the widest spot. So I made row 12 and row 13 exactly the same. I did that so I can put my steady rest on it. I put row 14 on to stabilize 13 before I put that steady rest on it. Now, when I first needed a steady rest on an open segment, I couldn't figure out how to do it because when the wheels had hit the gaps, it would shake and vibrate and jump, tear stuff up. I finally figured that if I could get the wheels to ride right on the joint between two rings, there would always be wood underneath the wheels that would run smooth. But, getting rollerblade wheels to ride right on a joint, good idea, but not practical at all. Just don't work. Just can't get them to stay there. So what I did, I threw, my, threw away my rollerblade wheels and got me some skateboard wheels, which are flat. Yeah, I'm flat, I can get them to sit right on the joint, make the joint just a little bit proud of the rest. Just a little bit flat area right across both rings. So there's always wood underneath the wheels. Now it ain't perfect. I I suppose if I worked on it I could get it perfect. But it don't jump and vibrate and shake. It sings. It'll sing. But it runs pretty smooth. bad. It's 
good enough to hold it, good enough where I can get in here and work. I want the steady rest on it because there ain't too much wood between here and the face plate. And the face plate, it is mounted to face plate with paper. So I'm going to be coming out quite a ways yet, so I want something to hold it. So, steady rest is on it. I'm getting ready to put on the 17th ring. Got them cut and lined up. Yeah, according to the pattern, the 17th ring right here is exactly the same as the first ring. So basically what I'm going to do now is just repeat the pattern over again. Start, use the first ring, 17th ring, same. Just use the first ring and then just start running it over again one more time. So I'm going to end up with 32 open segment rings when I'm finished. I got 16 on and like I said, the 17th one is the same as the first one. So just duplicate it one more time and then I'll put the top ring on it. Well, let me see if I can explain what I'm going to do now. I've got a whole bunch more rings on and I want to move my steady rest up. Keep it as far away from the face plate as I can. Keep it stable out at the end. So I got to have two rings that's got the same outside diameter put the steady rest on. But the two rings are not supposed to have the same outside diameter and of course not have the same inside diameter. Now, when I Cut the material for the segments. What I did was just cut it off the edge of the boards. Just cut right off the edge of the boards. So however the thick, whatever thickness the boards is, is how wide this turned out to be. And of course how wide it is determines how wide the segments are. Segments the same width. So they're really the same width as the board they were cut from. So they're not all the same, and I don't let that bother me. That's just a little extra wood i got to turn off on the inside. They're all a little bit different. It's all four four wood, so they're pretty much the same. But the smallest one, the thinnest board, was the black limba. You can see it's a little bit shorter than the rest. So what I did is I picked ring 20 one and 22 to put the steady rest on because it don't use the black limba. Don't have to use that short one. But I am using Bacote and the Bacote is not quite as big as the rest of them. So I cut one piece of Bacote just a little bit wider than the old Bacote. I'm going to make 12 segments from it. Just cut it for 12 segments so that I got plenty of wood so the inside I'll have enough to cut the inside so yeah I should have plenty of wood to stick off on the inside because I've been turning a lot out to meet the size of the black limba so I'm going to make ring 20 and 21 both 10 and 3 quarters 21 is supposed to be 10 and a half but it that's only an eighth on each side that it's got to stick in. And of course, 22 will be 10 and a quarter. So I should have enough material by using this piece of Bacote. So I'm going to go ahead and put those two rings on. And when I get them on, well, I, I got to put the 22nd ring on to stabilize them. Then I'll be able to flatten the top of them and move the steady rest up. I got 24 rings on. I got two rings past where I put the two rings that are the same diameter. And I got them turned after I got it stabilized by putting extra rings on. I turned it round. I made it a little bit proud right at the joint so I could put the wheels on it. 
and I moved the wheels up. So the wheels are riding on both rings. Not very much, but a little bit of both rings. So it should run smooth. Should be no bounce and jump. It might sing a little, but it should run smooth. How about that? So, like I said, I got 24 rings on. I still got about, oh, about 10 more to go before I do the top. But it's getting there. I got to go and do some sanding and some finishing in the inside. Now, I've been turning it, so I work my way out. Now you can see why I turn as I work my way out. Something like this. It'd be, it would be really hard to get in there and turn it. So... That's where I'm at right now. Okay, I've got all the open segments on it now. I stopped it, not because of the size, not because of the number of rings, but because of the pattern. I just finished this diamond here, and that's where I want to stop it. Now, with this pattern, of course, you can keep on adding as much as you want. You can go on forever if you want. So, what I got to do now is put the solid rings on the top and of course I'm going to repeat the pattern that's on the bottom one thin dark ring which is wenge then a thin light ring which is going to be maple then a thicker wenge ring so I'm going to make a big thick wenge ring I'm going to glue it on and I'm going to part it off leave a thin piece on here and I can put the maple in this is the piece of maple that come off the bottom of course, I can use it up here. It's way too thick, but turning it down will be easy. So, yeah, I already got the maple. It'll be just right. It's a little bit, a little bit wider, but it's plenty thick, so it'll work. So, what I got to do now is make a solid wing ring. 24 segments. This is 48, so 24 will be good. I've got... 24 segments cut for a solid ring, and I got them dry clamped. I actually cut them and sanded them. Got them dry clamped, make sure they're tight before I glue them. Seven and a half inch ring, get the top. You like this clamp I got on them? One day I got so tired of band clamps, driving me nuts, that I decided I'm never going to use them again. So I went to a big box store and I bought me some 40 pound nylon cord and I come home and I said I'm going to make it work. When I got home, it didn't take long to figure out how to make it work. Quite an easy device. Clump it down as tight as you want until you break 40 pound cord of course. But it works great. I never look back. Cord gets too much glue on it, throw it away and cut a new piece. But it's so easy to use and so nice. If you want to know more about it, I got a video on this channel just on how to make and use this clamp. So, that being said, I got this dry clamp, everything tight. No gaps nowhere, it's tight. I push on the inside, push on the outside, they're tight. So, I'm going to go ahead and glue it up and... Then I'm going to flatten it, flatten one side and glue it on. I got the wing guy ring flattened on one side. Actually, I flattened both sides. But I'm going to re-flatten the other side later. Uh, got the flat side, got it mounted, cold jaws. Got it mounted on a live tailstock adapter. I'm going to glue it on. I'm going to put a light layer of glue on. I don't want glue dripping everywhere on these open segments. Put a light layer of glue on it. And I'm going to put it in the tailstock and bring it up so that the joints on this solid ring fall right on top of an open segment. There won't be much long grain glue up across it, but there will be some. After it dries, then I'm going to part it. So I leave a thin ring on here, now turn it and flatten it, 
I'll glue on the maple ring. And again, I'll turn and flatten it, and then I'll glue back on the piece I parted off. So that'll give me good strength with long grain glue up across all the joints. So first thing is just to glue this on here. I don't want too much glue. A little bit should be enough. Now we'll see. That's plenty, probably too much, but it's plenty. I said probably too much, but that's what we're going to use. Put it in the tailstock. Bring it up close. Line it up so it joints right over an open segment. Clamp her down. Okay, looking good. Looking good. We'll let it dry now for at least 15 minutes. I'll probably go in the house and have some coffee and let it dry for maybe a half hour or so. Come back, I gotta part it off. So get me a... I've got the... Wenge put on, split, put the maple on, turned it down, put the big piece of Wenge back on. So everything glued on now. Now, I brought the steady rest up and put it on here on solid rings. It runs good. Everybody knows that. And uh, this is a good example of why I turn the inside as I work my way out. Because right now, I've got to finish turning the inside, but I've only got to turn about that far down. That's it, just about that far, which ain't too hard. Then I've got to sand and put finish about that far down, right in here. It ain't that bad. So it'll be easy to finish doing the inside. Once I finish the inside and shape it here a little bit, then I'm going to put the cone on the tailstock and bring the cone up and turn the outside between centers. I'll remove the steady rest, bring the cone up, remove the steady rest, and just turn the outside between centers. be relatively easy. The steady rest up here, it was easy to finish turning, sanding, putting finish on the inside. And I've got this turned back just a little bit, so when I bring the cone up, I'll have some room and I'll be able to finish turning the outside. So I'm going to let this dry. I got shellac on it. That's all it is, just shellac. I'm going to let it dry. And I got my cone. It's a homemade cone. Nothing but MDF glued together. Got a 1 by 8 nut on the back. Drilled the nut and put a set screw so it don't unscrew. Got it on my live tailstock adapter. So I'm going to just put that in the tailstock and bring it up. Like I said, after I let it dry a while, remove the steady rest, of course, and then turning the outside will be easy between centers. It's just a piece of cake between centers. No problem at all. So after it dries, put the cone on it, turn it between center, turn the outside, and then all I'll have to do is the bottom. Now it's going to be a pain. I got it between centers now. Remember, it's mounted on a piece of paper here, brown paper bag. And I got this in now mounted on a cone. So turning the outside would just be simple now. There'd be no vibration at all. 
should spin beautifully. It'd be easy turning the outside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just turn the outside and sand it. Put a little finish on it. It's been turned, sanded, put shellac on it. The woods are, some of them are softer than the others, some are harder. So can't sand too much or you'll wear the soft ones down leave the hard ones. And uh, can't get a perfect shine on it, so just a little bit of shellac put on it. Now, I've got to remove the face plate. You remember I put it on with brown paper bag. So what I'm going to do, i got a tool here I sharpened. Put it right on where the brown paper bag is. Once you get the paper started tearing, it'll tear out. Getting it started may be a problem. Get it right on the paper. There we go. There we go. Tear the paper loose. Uh, that's it. Paper's off. Now all I got to do, turn the bottom some. Turn the bottom. I'm going to hold the top with the cold jaws, tapered pins. I like to bring the tailstock up to the bottom, but if I put the tailstock right in the center of this floating bottom, it ain't that strong. It could break it. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I think, is make a round piece to sit in here and just push right up against the edges of it and hold it with the tailstock. I should be able to put it between centers that way. So, first thing I want to do is get a piece to fit right in here. Might have to turn a piece, but that's okay. Well, I got the bottom turned. Got it finished. <clears throat> now, the pattern, I use this pattern here, of course, like I showed you before, the ones with the diamonds, and it repeats every eight segments going around it repeats. I use 48 segments so that means I've got six repetitions going around. Now I could have used 32 segments and just had four repetitions or I could have even used 40 segments and had five repetitions. And going up it's repeated twice. The pattern's repeated twice going up. And of course with a pattern like this, you can continually add more rings and keep on going. Keep the pattern going as far as you want. You can stop it anywhere you want. What I did is I stopped it when this diamond was complete. That's when I stopped it. That's where I wanted to stop the pattern. And so, I know the shape ain't much. I don't really like the shape. But it is what it is. And I used... Uh, like I said, maple, paduk, black limba, Peruvian walnut, hormigo, bacote, and then avadar in the center. Then on the ends, I, on the top and bottom, I used uh, wenge and maple. And making it, of course, I used the Chef wear kit system right here, index wheel and gluing platform. 
to glue it on on the lathe, which is relatively easy. You can see it come out perfect spacing all the way around. So, I hope you enjoyed this little video. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to leave my email up here. And uh, I hope you come back and uh, see my next video. I really appreciate watching you watching my video. I appreciate the ones that subscribe. And uh, thank you.